Greetings, I'm Brian Posey, a longtime Tech Target contributor, and in this video I want to give you a preview of how storage has changed in Windows Server 8. Okay, so here we have Windows Server 8. Now before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to mention that this is just a developer preview. We're not even to beta testing yet. So the final design is probably going to change quite a bit before the product actually is released to market. But even in the developer preview, things are far enough along that we can get a very real sense of what Microsoft has planned for the future. So with that said, the first thing that I want to do is open the Disk Management Console. Now the Disk Management Console should look familiar to anybody who's worked with previous versions of Windows Server. And at first glance it doesn't really look like much has changed. Here we have our system disk, and then you can see that I've got three other disks that are online but right now. They're completely unallocated. There's no volumes or anything like that. And it doesn't really look like much has changed right now, but there's actually quite a bit going on behind the scenes. For example, one of the changes that you're going to see is if I go to the action menu, we now have an option to create a VHD or attach a VHD. This is something that didn't exist in previous versions of the Disk Management Console. But the most important thing that I wanted to point out about this console is these disks. Ever since Windows NT first debuted, Disk Management Console has always been used to show physical disks. You know, we've got Disk 1, Disk 2, Disk 3, these are all physical disks on this server. Now in Windows Server 2008, you could attach an iSCSI drive and that would show up as a physical disk, but things like virtual hard disk files and things like that never have shown up as physical disks before. So just remember this view later on when we come back to the console. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is open the Server Manager. So to do that I'm going to click on the Windows button and I'm going to go to Server Manager. And you're going to see that the Server Manager looks a lot different in Windows Server 8 than it did in Windows Server 2008. Now right now we're looking at what's known as a dashboard view. This is kind of an overview of the state of the server, so to speak. One thing that you'll notice is that I've already installed the file services role. So I'm just going to go to file services and here we have a, a brand new view. Um, you'll notice that we've got several structures listed here. We've got servers, pools, volumes, shares, and iSCSI virtual disks. The main feature that I want to show you in this video is pools. Pools are essentially a collection of physical storage that you can overlay virtual hard disk files onto. Now the advantage of doing this is that Windows Server 8 allows you to create virtual hard disk files that are up to 16 terabytes in size. Now I don't know about you, but I don't have any 16 terabyte drives on my server. But that's no problem because by using pools, you can span a single virtual hard disk file across multiple physical disks. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. So if you look, you'll notice that we've got something called Primordial. Now this is created by default, but I'm going to create a brand new storage pool. So to do that, I'm just going to right click on Primordial, and I'm going to choose New Storage Pool. This is going to bring up a new pool wizard. I'm going to click Next to clear the welcome screen, and it's going to ask me for a pool name. So I'm just going to call this My Pool, and we can enter an optional description if we like, which in a production environment would be a good idea so that you can outline the pool's purpose. I'm just going to click Next. And here we get to choose which physical disks we want to include in the pool. Now you'll notice that all of those disks that I showed you through the Disk Management Console are listed here. We could choose any combination of these. I'm just going to go ahead and choose all of them and click Next. I'm going to get a confirmation screen asking me if that's really what I want to do. It is, so I'm going to click Commit. And we're going to go into this wizard that's going to create the storage pool. And the pool's been created. Now we have an option right here to go ahead and create a volume when the wizard closes. Normally you would probably want to do that when you create a storage pool, but for right now I'm not going to bother because I want to instead go back to the disk management console and show you what effect this has had. Okay, so here we are back at the disk management console, and if I expand this, You'll notice that all of those disks that we saw earlier are gone. Now they're still installed on the server, but they're just not listed in the Disk Management Console. And I'm going to come back to the Disk Management Console one more time a little bit later on, and I'll show you why. Okay, so going back to Server Manager, here we have my pool, which is the pool that we just created a second ago, 379 gigabytes in size. And let's go ahead and create a volume on that pool. Actually, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and create two volumes. 
So to do that, I'm just going to right click on the pool and choose the new volume command. This is going to launch the new volume wizard. I'm going to click next. And we're going to see a screen asking us to select the server and disk. We're going to select the pool that we created earlier and click next. And it's going to ask us for a virtual disk name. I'm just going to call this disk1. And we can enter an optional description if we like. I'm going to click next and we're prompted to enter a volume size. I'm going to make this one 50 gigabytes. And I'm going to use a simple layout because I want to keep things simple. Now you notice that we're given a choice between thin provisioning and fixed provisioning. Thin provisioning basically creates the volume but it doesn't actually use the disk space until you start filling the volume up. Fixed provisioning claims all of the physical disk space that you're going to use right up front. So I'm going to go ahead and create thin provisioned volumes because it works a whole lot faster. So I'm going to click Next. It's going to ask me what drive letter I want to assign to the volume. D is fine, so I'll click Next. File system is NTFS. Click Next. Here we have our summary screen. Everything looks good, so I'm going to click Commit. And this process takes a few minutes. I'm just going to pause the video for a moment until this finishes. Okay, so our volume has been created. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and we're going to create another volume. Now the first volume that I created was only 50 gigs in size, but you'll notice that each of our physical disks right now is 127 gigs. What happens if we need to create a volume that exceeds the size of a physical disk? Well, let's find out. So I'm going to right click on my pool, we're going to create another new volume, and we're going to go through the exact same steps as before, and we'll just call this one disk 2. And this time I'm going to make the volume 200 gigabytes in size, which is far greater than the 127 gigabyte capacity on these physical disks. And once again I'm going to thinly provision them, just for the interest of time. We'll use Drive E, NTFS, and Commit. And I'm going to pause the video again until this process finishes. Okay, so the volume's been created. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Now, one thing that I want to point out here, you'll notice that the free space is still listed as 379 gigabytes, and there are two reasons for that. One, the server manager doesn't refresh automatically as often as it does in Windows Server 2008. In Windows Server 8, the screen only refreshes once every 10 minutes, I believe it is by default, but you can hit the refresh button at any time and bring it up to date. But you'll notice that even after I've refreshed it, we still have most of our free space, and the reason for that is because we use thinly provisioned volumes, which don't, o don't occupy much disk space at all until you start filling them up. But if you actually wanted to see the volumes that we created, we can just go over here to Volumes, and here we have it. We have C, which is our system drive, but here's the two simple volumes that we just created, 150 gig and 1 200 gig. So it is possible to create a volume that exceeds the size of the physical disk. But what's actually going on behind the scenes? Well, let me show you. I'll go ahead and close out Server Manager, and we're going to go back to the Disk Management Console. And as you'll recall, those physical disks were gone the last time we opened the console. But check this out. Now we have Disk 4 and Disk 5, which are the two that we created. And Windows Server 8 is actually showing these as physical disks, um, even though they're actually virtual disks that exist within our storage pool. So this is how storage has changed within Windows Server 8. Okay, so that does it for my demo of storage pools, but one thing to keep in mind is that storage pools are only one of the new storage related features in Windows Server 8. Microsoft has many, many other features such as deduplication and a host of other storage features that we'll be exploring in future videos.